trend. It's defined as the change or move to one general direction. And if you haven't guessed, that's mint green when it comes to watches. Whether you're a trend follower or a trend hater, it's here now and it's here to stay. Well, at least in the short term anyway. But the biggest issue with getting on the mint green trend has always been the inaccessible prices. But with the release of the Traska commuter, it's never been more accessible. The question is, does it live up to the hype? thinking I know what that question that you want answering is yeah what's it actually like to commute with so let's deal with one of the more important questions up front and early what's it actually like to wear more specifically, what's it like to wear out? Which shouldn't be a surprise, it's really comfy. Why should that not be a surprise? Well, because let's be honest, dimensionally and looks wise, it's, it's modeled on the <coughs> Rolex Oyster Perpetual. There's no getting around it. It's very, very similar dimensionally and looks wise. What is perhaps more surprising and what I wasn't expecting was the ability this watch has to reach outside of the watch community. This is one of the few watches that I've worn out. I went to the supermarket, did some shopping, and people looked at the watch. People were interested in the watch. And that's when you realise that this mint green trend has gone far beyond the watch community and is reaching people that aren't interested in watches. It's becoming commonplace. My mum, who has no interest in watches whatsoever, doesn't even wear one, she likes this. She was interested in it, and that's because of the colour of the dial. And that is the collective consciousness of trend, of people becoming aware and people becoming interested because they see it in social media, in magazines, in the media they consume. If you want looks and you want comfort, you can't, go, you can't really go wrong. You're going to get looks, it's going to get noticed, and it's really easy and comfy to wear. But what if you want a bit more than that? What's the detail on the watch like? So what does this dial give you other than the entry ticket to the mint green dial club? We get applied polished indices all the way round with the double indices at the 12 o'clock position. They're nicely finished, nicely polished, and they certainly do pay homage to the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. You've got a printed logo, the Trasca logo, just beneath that, that 12 o'clock position. You've got a nicely polished frame date window at the six o'clock position, quite aqua terra in that respect. The hands are in the style of the Oyster Perpetual. They're quite nice, they're nicely finished, but there's no crease through the middle of the hands. Therefore, they look a bit dull, a little bit flat under the light, and there's a few sharp edges on them. Interestingly, the second hand is beautifully finished. It's razor sharp. Looking at it under the macro is really, really a pleasure. In terms of what could be better about the dial, on my particular example, unfortunately, the indices at 12 o'clock are not quite straight. They're a little bit closer to each other at the top of the watch than they are at the bottom. It's not a deal breaker. You can't notice it unless you look under macro. So it is really not the end of the world. The only other thing I'd like to see, and I'm probably asking a bit much at this price point, is to see a colour match date wheel. I just think the white date wheel just stands out a little bit too much, and actually if it was colour matched, it would make the whole dial work a little bit more harmoniously. So I feel like the case is really where it's at with this watch. You've got a 316L stainless steel case with a screw down crown. You've got drilled lugs, which are great for a quick swap of straps. It's got a really nice brushed finish on it, as well as some really interesting polished chamfers around the lugs and around the side of the bezel. On top of that brushed and polished finish, you've got the proprietary Trasker scratch resistant treatment, which 
gives the watch a little bit of a gunmetal gray shine on top of the actual finishing. It's really pretty, it really glistens. It definitely looks different to most stainless steel cases I've looked at, and it definitely holds up when it comes to scratches. This watch hasn't got a single scratch on it yet. It's got a really nice piece of box double domed sapphire crystal with AR on the underside. It stays very close and very true to the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, which is a great looking watch that works in a sporty environment and a dress environment and provides incredible utility. In terms of dimensions, we've got a diameter of 36.5 millimeters. We've got a lug to lug of 44 millimeters, meaning it'll work on even the smallest of wrists and a thickness of just 10 mil. That stainless steel case with the screw down crown all adds up to a water resistance of 100 meters or 330 feet. The movement's really solid. We've got the Miyota 9019, which I've got quite a lot of experience with. They're in a lot of my watches and touch wood. I've never had a single issue with any of them in any of my watches, ultra reliable movements. The 9000 series is Miyota's answer to Etta's 2824, although it's slimmer and it boasts a more impressive power reserve of 42 hours. We've got 28,800 beats per minute, giving that nice smooth movement of the hands, 24 joules, hacking and hand winding. The watch is regulated in four positions with accuracy of minus 10 to plus 20 seconds per day. So the bracelet's in the Oyster style. You've got the same finishing and treatment as you have on the case. So it's got that proprietary treatment on the steel, making it much more scratch resistant. And hopefully you can see that sort of glisten that you get from that treatment on it. It tapers down from 20 mil at the lugs, down to 16 mil, and it's really solid and it's fully articulated. Although it is a little, jangly. You've got a push to open clasp, two buttons either side, give it a press, opens up, and there you can see a really nicely turned finish that they've put on the inside of the clasp. Goes back together with a really nice click, and you've got plenty of micro adjustment there, meaning that you can definitely get a really nice precise fit with this bracelet. So other than the jangles, it fits really well. It's really well made. Got a really quick lug drop on it, so it will fit any wrist. You can see just how small my wrist is there. And yeah, it's not gonna scratch very easily. It's gonna keep its shine. So what do I like about the watch? Well, I think it offers great value for money. What do I mean by that? Well, the watch retails for $565, which is about 420 of your English pounds. That's not a lot in comparison to things like Rolex Oyster Perpetuals and Tiffany Nautiluses, if you wanna get on the trend train and have that mint green dial. The actual finish of the watch is nice on the case and the bracelet. I really like that proprietary treatment that they've put on there. It really shines in a way that none of my other stainless steel watches do. And it's also definitely very scratch resistant. Normally when I review a watch, I get quite a few scratches or dings. I'm not particularly careful with them, but in this instance, this watch has stood up brilliantly. It's not got any marks, any scratches whatsoever. So that's a really, really big plus point. So they're the good bits, but what about the bad bits? What don't I like so much about the watch? Well, there's two sort of areas that we're gonna to touch on. The first one is the finishing. In particular, the finishing on the dial and the hands. For me, there is definite room for improvement there. I think it's a shame the watch has come out with the indices not aligned. And it's a shame that there's a few other people talking on YouTube saying they've got similar or worse issues. That said, it's easily rectifiable and I have faith that Trasca will put the right QC processes in place to make sure that this doesn't happen on future releases. In terms of the hands, 
I think they just could have been finished a little bit differently or with perhaps a little bit more style. They don't really shine very much. They're quite flat and I personally found them a little hard to read in terms of the glare off of the actual case and off of the glass of the watch. They just didn't stand out too much for me. And that really kind of leads me on to my second point, which is when you think about the proprietary treatment on the case and the bracelet, Trasker are doing their own thing. That's unique to them. And that's really good to see and I applaud that. When it comes to the style of the watch, and I think it's, it's more specific to the commuter than say the Summiteer or some of their other watches, I just like to see them develop their own design language a little bit more and actually to put that into place um, on watches like this. I think they could have played around with the indices a little bit more and changed the handsets and taken a bit more of a step away from the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. So that's my thoughts. If you're looking to get on the mint green trend, I think this is an absolutely brilliant way to go. Conversely, if you're looking to get into the colored dial trend at the moment, but you want something with a little bit more uniqueness in terms of its design execution, I really would recommend that you have a look at the Astra and Banks Fortitude Light. It is a fantastic watch. There's a quite a few color variations and it is a little bit more unique in terms of its design. But as always, I'm really keen to know, what do you think? What do you make of this mint green trend? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And also, what do you think the next big color trend is gonna be in 2022 and 2023? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like. I will be back in the next one with the Black Bay 58 Bronze Boutique Edition. But until next time, bye.